everybody doing today? Do me a favor. When I say, how's everybody doing today? You guys say, feeling great and getting better. Oh, here we go. How's everybody doing today? Oh, that's fantastic. That is great. My name is Frank Robinson, and I have worked for NASA for nearly 35 years. And I got my start <laughs> by, uh, I guess you could say, the inspirations in my life. And it started all oh, really all the way back in the 1960s. Uh, I came, I, I grew up in a time where we had the space race. I grew up in a time where we had Martin Luther King. I, had, I grew up in a time where we had hippies. And uh, a lot of those things really impacted and molded my life. But not as much as a gentleman named Dr. Julian Earls. When I was 16 years old, I ran into this Julie, this gentleman, and I really was going to accompany my brother. He was graduating from high school, and Dr. Julian Earls was the speaker, and he was from NASA. And Dr. Julian Earls was division chief for the safety office, and I was so taken by this gentleman. He had on. Uh, a suit that didn't have a wrinkle anywhere, a uh, beautiful bow tie. Uh, he, every hair was in place. Uh, this gentleman uh, just, just exhumed success. Uh, it had just really was overwhelming. And um, he was very articulate and really all the girls loved him at the, at the church where he was speaking. And I like, well, you know, I'm 99 pounds. I'm not going to be a football or basketball player. Maybe this might be the career for me. <laughs> so anyway, since that day, I said, you know what? That's the type of person I want to be. I want to be like Dr. Julian Earls. So uh, I, at the time, I had just really started uh, at my high school. And, you know, they put me in some low... Uh, low le lower level math that wasn't going to prepare me to go on to college. And they at my school, they called it shop math. And it was really for uh, the, the trades. And so if you really were not going to pursue a career that required a lot of math, then you could just do this trade type of math. That wasn't for me. I was going to go to college. Dr. Julian Earls with shop man. So I went to my guidance counselor and I just, hey, you know what? I've studied hard. I've done a lot of good things. And while I was in middle school, I, I want to go to college. Get me in college preparatory type class. So they moved me into geometry. And so I'm scared now because I've asked for all of this. And I'm like, man, oh man, I hope I can handle this. And I ran into a gentleman, uh, my teacher, his name was Mr. Booth. And Mr. Booth convinced me that the way to success in math was repetition. Just do your homework, do the problems over and over again. And, and, and sooner or later, something will just click. And I remember back to my fifth grade teacher, and she used to always tell us to put our thinking caps on and strap them up real tight. And, and, and I, I could swore I could just think better. So sitting in that math class, I would just always imagine putting on that thinking cap and focusing. It just would help me to focus. And I soon learned that math was something I really, really enjoyed. And I would just do repetitions of whatever math problem I was given for homework and as many as I could until I understand the principles being taught. And so math became fun for me. And so I wanted to do some profession that included math. Thus, that coupled with the fact that I had ran into this gentleman named Dr. Julian Earls set me on a path towards engineering. So then off I go to 
to uh, college and I run in, I'm going to Ohio State University and I go to orientation and I didn't do as well as I probably should have in high school because I wanted to be with the cool people. And that affected uh, my scores in SAT. Didn't do as well. So when I got to orientation, the first thing they told me was, if you score at a certain threshold, unless you're over that threshold, you should change your course, your, your major from engineering to something else. Didn't make that threshold and I was told to change my major. They, they basically strongly recommended that I do so. And I said, no way, not me. Uh uh. One thing I've always had is really uh, pr uh, persistence, determination, and I was goal oriented. So when I set my goals, you're not gonna get me off of those goals. Uh, I was going to be an engineer and if they, they told me it would take me seven years to become an engineer. And if I stayed in, and guess what? Didn't lie. The only reason I got out in five years was because I went in summers and took the additional math courses that I needed to take. Uh, but it's, it was really worthwhile the ride. I enjoy engineering so, so much. NASA has been a blessing to my life. But um, as I moved on, you know, as I showed you earlier, I have just all kinds of accolades. And even going back to that orient day in orientation when I was told not that I, I would, I probably would not make it in engineering and then excelling to the point where I became Black Engineer of the Year. Black Engineer of the Year. What a wonderful accomplishment. And so I, had, I got the opportunity to meet other great people. This is uh, Guy Bluford, the first Black astronaut. He worked with me. I worked side by side with this gentleman. Beautiful opportunity opportunity and beautiful experience. So, you know, what would I say? One thing that I would tell you is that failure is a derivative of success. A lot of times you can't realize true success without understanding what, how to get there from a failed experience. That, does that mean everybody needs to fail before they can have success? No, it only means that if you do, you need to learn from that mistake. Uh, you need to learn from not achieving that goal. One, uh, you know, one example I could use, and a lot of people use sports. Uh, I coached my son's basketball team from the time he was 13 to the time he was 18. Every year we fail. A lot of times we got bounced in the first round. But come 2008, 2008, yes, we won the championship because every year we learned something different about those teams that we could not beat. We started to learn that certain people couldn't, couldn't hit a free throw. We learned that if we guarded a person on the left side, they were, not, they were not good with dribbling with their right because they were left-handed. So there were different things that we learned even though we failed until uh, accumulation of that learning led to success. So let's talk in NASA terms. In NASA, we have what we call the engineering life cycle, five stages, development, uh, research, assembly, test, and operation. In development, we may, let's take an example of a fuel. Let's say we're trying to find a special fuel that will take us from Earth to Mars. We might try 20 different, different fuels and we'll find out that 19 won't work, but that one will. All we need is one. All we need is one. It reminds me when I was selling my house. We had probably, I don't know, 15 people come and look at our house and it never sold. You can consider those failures. 
But that sick, but each time we ask the person why they did not like the house. Some said, well, you had green, something that looked like green mold on your panel and on the side of your house. So go wash that off. You had cracks in your driveway. Fix the cracks in your driveway. Your garage floor was too dirty. Painted the garage floor. Uh, felt like your basement needed to be painted. Painted the, the, the uh, basement. We didn't like the aquarium that you had in your wall. Drywalled over the aquarium. And next thing, the next person, they purchased the house. So, again, the only time there is a true failure is when you don't learn. That is the biggest lesson that I've learned in my life. Is that when you're down, you pick yourself up, you look at the facts, determine what, what you need to do in terms of solutions, and you move in that direction. That's why engineers are called problem solvers. And so, again, look it up. Derivative. <laughs> and, and, okay, what would you say a derivative is? Let me give you the engineering definition. The limit of the ratio of the increment of a function to the increment of a variable in it. As the latter tends to go to zero, the instantaneous change of one quantity with respect to another as velocity, which is the instantaneous change of distance with respect to time. It's between me and you. That's the mathematical definition. So when I say uh, derivative, a failure is a derivative of success. A lot of times you'll get success, success after you learn from things that you did not get right. So keep on trucking. Keep on moving forward. Set your goals and you will be successful. And to all of those administrators in Tulsa, Oklahoma, I want to say thank you and for giving me this opportunity. And I love speaking with you. You guys, give me a shout out sometimes. And I'd love to come back and be part of your uh, educational experience. Good luck to each and every one of you as you move forward. And hey, NASA needs you because we need people in space. Before I leave, I want you to look to your left. If anybody's in your room, look, look to your right. If you see a person you tell them, guess what? I'm going to be the first person on Mars. Call me a Martian. That's what I want to see. That's what I love to hear as I'm sitting in my rocking chair. That one of you, through this experience, ended up being one of our trusted and most valuable people in NASA. Somewhere in our NASA family. We need you all. Love to have you. For now, goodbye. How's everybody doing today? Feeling great and getting better.